Okay, hello, welcome to our next virtual bridge session, which is sadly with me. Sorry, I know you've drawn the short straw. Um, <laughs> I'm here to talk to you today um, about assessment. Uh, just really, really my experiences of, of using assessment, especially in a kind of remote situation where your students are, are perhaps dispersed. And I, I come from a background of, I'm, I was an English teacher, ESOL mostly um, in, in trade, but uh, I have had a lot of experience of, of working with remote students and I did, I did set up uh, a remote uh, distance based uh, English school uh, in Japan uh, many years ago and, and can, most of my students at that time um, were, were all distance based. Um, so some of what I've learned is what I've apply, applied in, in face to face classes and just a, a blended approach and others are with kind of remote teaching as well. So just a few tips. Uh, but I'm before I start that, um, I'm going to do one thing. Oh, oh, so one of the other hosts of these sessions, um, Jason Miles Campbell, who is lovely, but not with us right now. Um, he uses this multi camera effect on these sessions and, and I, I'm desperate to go one better. And I have discovered that my, my children are obsessed with Snapchat filters. So these are, these are things that just, you know, transform your face into a, a variety of things now. So I've discovered that you can get Snapchat in Zoom. Um, it's, it's a thing called Snap Camera. And so, like, if I, if I experiment, I'm, I'm not sure how it works when I have headphones on uh, and I've not tried. But oh, this is the new look. This is Snapchat, baby. And it's, it's just, it's, it's it, like I'm, I'm just going with this today. Uh, all, all that it does is add a slight delay because it's adding this effect. But it's, it's the new younger me. Um, I'm, I'm just, I'm just going to impress Jason with it. So, you know, bear with me. It's, uh, I am actually much older. Um, <clears throat> so. Today, uh, we're, we're talking about assessment. And in assessment, uh, I, I'm going to cover two things. One, one are just some techniques that you can use with students. And these are, are very simple techniques uh, that you can apply if you're using pretty much any VLE or any tool. Um, but also, you could probably just apply them even in the class. It's, it's, it's fine. Um, but before I do that, what I'd like to take some time is to run a, a short, short quiz with you. Now, I can see there are 19 people. One person is just about to join the room. I'm going to take you through a, a short quiz that gives you an idea of how to write a good question. Because any assessment is basically down to the fact that you write a good question to begin with. And writing a good question is not always the easiest thing. So I thought we could try start with a, a quick quiz. Um, I'm going to give you eight questions and I'm going to let you work together as a group. So we're going to go into breakout rooms. Um, I'm going to post four questions to you. And as a group, I want you to come up with the correct answer for each question. And I believe that you can. And I've, I've run these questions before. Um, you, you may have seen them before. So if you know the answers, Please don't tell everyone in your room. But um, it's, it's basically, you're guaranteed to get these questions right. I mean, you should get 100% in this quiz. I, I guarantee it. But um, every question has a subtle message about writing good assessment questions and something that we'll cover shortly. So we have 19 in the room. How the questions will work is I'm going to post the four questions into the chat. So can I ask you just to make sure that you have your, your chat window uh, available? Now, it's slightly different if you're on a mobile or an iPad. I think when you press onto chat, it might take up the entire screen. So you, you, you can come back to this. Um, but what I'm going to do is put you into groups of up to four, uh, separate you out into breakout rooms, and you have four minutes to answer these questions, okay? Um, and you can unmute yourself and talk to the people in your room. And after four minutes, you'll automatically come back into this room and we'll go over the answers. Now, uh, oh, look, we have one more person joining, which makes it a, a, a grand total of 20. <gasps> That's so, oh, 
It just works out mathematically so well. So can you can you all see the the your chat windows? Uh, I think uh, James was was waiting for a reaction. Right. Okay. So I'm going to post the four questions, and it would be helpful if you have a pen or paper to note down the the answers. Let's let's go analog. That's it. It's 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 all about going retro. Um, so I'm going to post four questions into the chat. Uh, right here we go. Now, so I've I've numbered them Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4. Okay, uh, I am now going to have a go at putting you into breakout rooms. I am going to set it to each room is going to close after four minutes. These are real questions. There's there's no it's 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 not a joke. You can answer each one correctly, and because you're we're in a room of educators. We are getting 100%. We are definitely getting 100%. So <clears throat> I'm putting you into the rooms now. <laughs> right. Welcome back. See, I'm still sticking with this face. Uh, I'm not giving up on it. <laughs> right. OK. Um, I, I suspect that some rooms have done better than others. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but we're, we're, we're still going to continue. Um, did, did everyone get all four answers uh, or answers for all four? Uh, yeah, yeah, yes, I know some of you have. Mm. <laughs> right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you the next four questions. Uh, in, in the same way, I'm going to post them into the chat window. So if you have your chat window open here, uh, you'll see them. And if you open the chat window when you're in your breakout room, you'll see them as well. I'm going to give you a little bit longer, maybe five minutes this time, to answer these questions, uh, because I suspect some, some people were, well, well you kind of, you, you know the format now. So I, I, I'm going to say that you're, you're probably well versed. I have so, the answers, if it's any help. Uh, well, yes, Noel has the answers because he looked them up. But <laughs> <laughs> for the other honest people in the room, Oh, look again, my younger face, the shock. <laughs> uh, right, uh, we're going to put everyone back into your rooms. Okay, good luck. So, did you all do well? I mean, Noel, yeah. I know your team did well, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that, and you're almost all back with me. Fantastic. Right. Okay. So, have uh, you, you all? You've all got answers to all eight, right? Okay. So these these questions were originally uh, well, a version of these questions were written by Phil Race. Uh, Phil Race has had a long sort of history uh, working in, in assessment uh, and online uh, learning and development. Written a lot of books. If you ever have a chance to see Phil talk or his wife um is it, it it's amazing like the the, the it, it's just he's filled with such such good advice ar ar around learning and teaching and especially assessment so in these questions um did did anyone have any problems other than noel's team <laughs> no you're all, all looking pretty confident right okay Didn't have a problem not 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 no. <laughs> I, not I, anymore I not anymore <laughs> <laughs> not <laughs> okay, okay, so uh, let's see. I'm going to try and share. Let's see if I can share my question sheet. Uh, okay, let's let's try that. Uh, okay, right. This this is this is my question sheet. You you you'll probably see it. It's all it looks like such a small small sort of um, screen. But anyway, I wonder how that comes out in the recording. Interesting. Um, right. So the first question is: the usual function of grunge pokers is to remove grunges, snarts trigs or grods so let me ask uh, marianthi what, mm -hmm. what 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 did you have for that we put grunges grunges which is absolutely the correct answer wow <laughs> of, and of course it is yes uh -huh. can can you tell me why you picked out the word grunges because it was the first answer <laughs> 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 That's very honest. I have to say. I have to say. Uh, no, well, no. A grunge pranker would have to be something related to grunge. So, yes, I would okay. go for that. <laughs> That's exactly right. Okay. So the clue is in the question. Uh, 
Yeah. And it, it's the fact that sometimes when people are writing these questions, they sometimes give away a bit of information in the question itself that leads you towards the right answer. So in this case, the usual function of grunge powders, because the word grunge appears again in the question set, if you were forced to choose, grunges is the most likely answer that you would pick. And this is just an explanation or an example that when you're writing a multiple choice question or any other kind of assessment question, that you don't give too much information away in the question itself. <clears throat> now, question two. Anti-grotification occurs on spring mornings, on summer evenings, provided there is no rain before dusk, on autumn afternoons, or on winter nights. So let me ask uh, M. Laird. M. Laird, hello. Ah! <laughs> uh, let me unmute you for a second. Right. Yeah. You are, you're now broadcasting to the world, or at least my room, which is, you know, I think the same thing. So, um, oh, sorry, M. Laird, what, what should I call you? Margaret. Margaret. Okay, Margaret. Yeah. So, Margaret, tell me, when does anti-grotification occur? Well, can I thought in summer evenings, provided there is no rain before dusk. And that is, of course, the correct answer. Because um, why? Well, statistically, when we look at these kind of potential answers, it tends to be the case that the longer answer is usually the correct one, especially the ones with a bit more detail. So in this case, a longer answer. And why? Why is a longer answer correct? It's because the person who's writing these kind of um, the answer options sometimes knows a lot about the subject and, and are, is, is occasionally tempted to write a little bit more detail <laughs> about what the correct answer is. And for the ones that are wrong, sometimes writes a little bit less. So the basic tip here is always try to keep these questions and answers to, to roughly the same length so that you don't make one stand out amongst the rest. Which should give you a bit of a, a hint um, for Q3. Q3, you remove lurkies from trangitis by giving a bit of a push with a spat mat, um, prodding the ucker until the mathing falls off. Now the mathing, pff, my mathing always falls off. Turning the sproggle 37 degrees counterclockwise or waiting for the GOS to turn up. So, uh, Owen, uh, what, what, what did you choose for this one? Well, at this point, we were just going by the pattern with A, B, so we thought, why not C? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's not an uncommon thing, right? So, yeah, <laughs> I, I, again, similar to question two, um, there is a, an element of detail in this answer, which sets it apart from the other uh, previous two, uh, other three options. So turning the sproggle 37 degrees counterclockwise is so detailed that in, in fact you're given the clue by the fact that the answer just seems to contain a bit more than the rest and, and this in fact is the correct answer. So um, let me ask uh, Anne, how about Q4? Non-responsive fratling is usually found in a gringle, janket, cloppy or <laughs> ucker pod. So well, I had two advantages. Um, one, we had Noel in the group. And secondly, I think we were just following that pattern, A, B, C, D. <laughs> okay. So uh, is, is, is there anything anything else that you, you, you might find about non-responsive mm -hmm. rattling is, is given? No? No. <laughs> right. Okay. So, so, let, so again, um, you are right. The ucker pod is the correct answer, but it is the only possible answer. There is no way it could be any of the oh, others. Oh, I know why. Okay, tell me, tell, tell. <laughs> <laughs> it starts with you. Yes, it does. Yes. It starts yes. with the letter U. And so and going and back and to my, my English teaching <laughs> expertise here. So non-responsive fratling is usually found in an um, yeah. A N. Now that's the key part there. So what follows must sound like a vowel. And the yeah. only one that sounds like a vowel there is ucker pod. Grammatically, the other three would not make sense. Again, giving away the answer there. Right. Moving on. 
Uh, question five. Uh, I, I feel, or I, I can see there, 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 there are more people here. Uh, let's see, Pauline. Pauline, I feel it's your turn. Oh my um, goodness. <laughs> <laughs> so, which are the exceptions to the law of lumpicality? Now, it, it's a legal question, so Jason would have had an advantage here, but is the answer the mill trip in the natter cap, the bifid pan trip, the common queeter, that's a good one, uh, or the flanged ozer? What did you go for? I really don't know. <laughs> I there. don't have an answer. <laughs> <laughs> if, if, if we were putting a finger to your head, what, what, what would you, what would would you choose? Say the common quitter. The common quitter. <laughs> Unf unfortunately, no. No, it's not the common quitter. It's, that, that's a common mistake, but it, it can this only the, be one. This, this, this is a plural. Yeah, yes. Right, that's what it is. It's, it's, it's a plural. So when we say, what are the exceptions? What, which are the exceptions to the law of lumpicality? Exceptions. So there must be more than one. Now, if we look through the answers, um, several of them are singular in the sense that it, it's a single option that you have, but only the mill trip and the natter cap grammatically uh -huh. are two things. So, so again, it's that slight hint in the question. Gives it away. <laughs> Okay, uh, <laughs> question, question six. Now, a pinch is worth one yardie. If splurgles are three yardies, what is the yap sack? I always get my yap sacks confused. And Wendy, but I feel, I feel you, you'd have an insight in this. Um, Wendy, what, if, if you had to choose one, what, what, what would you have gone with? Um, um, <laughs> I would have went with 95.3. 95.3? Okay, okay. <laughs> no, which is completely no. off piece. Well, to be honest, it's the second most um, commonly chosen answer uh, when, when I do this <laughs> with a lot of people, um, but it is not the correct answer. Does anyone have the okay. correct answer? There's a one and a three in yeah. the question, so maybe 66.7%. Yeah. Absolutely right. Okay, well done, Walter. Well, Top of the well class. Done. So a pinch is worth one yardie. So again, it's using the information that's there. There's a one and a three. So the only kind of mathematical relationship with the potential answers is, is probably two thirds, which is the 66.7%. Mm -hmm. So this, again, sometimes giving more information away, sometimes giving that connection with the maths um, gives you a clue as to what the answer might be. Okay, almost to the end. One common disorder of an overspragged ucker pod is copious bezeling, intermittent uh, weggerment, non-responsive frattling, uneven yarkation. Um, I feel, Svetlana, you, you, you should have a, an idea about this. Oh my, <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> well, we kind of uh, used a different approach, but I know I now I kind of understand what they are doing here. So common disorder of, of over on, on over. I love the fact that you're taking time to think through this. That's, that's, <laughs> that's, that shows dedication. I love you for that. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know if it's going to help or not. Over sprung in on the cord. If you were forced to choose one? Non-responsive. I'll go with non-responsive frattling. Non-responsive frattling. Of course it is. It is absolutely it? Oh! That is correct. <laughs> 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 now, now, okay, but why? Why is it non-responsive frattling? Why is I, it non-responsive frattling? I have no, because I have no idea. I just had a feeling that because it's a disorder of over and something, uh, and, uh, I don't know, it just because non it's a one, one, one <laughs> negative thing just pops out. <laughs> so the real clue here is that the game was given away. Does, any, does anyone else know, by the way, if, if you want to jump in? I look up and down all work. A, B, C, D. <laughs> so, so actually, it is linked um, to a previous question. Question, question seven. Oh, question four. Non responsive frattling is usually found. Oh. And you see here that in another question, you actually get a hint of what the answer might be. And it isn't uncommon for people to give the game away because they have to write so many questions that sometimes, especially in extended questions, stems, where you have a, a lot of information that you're putting forward. Mm -hmm. You can take some of that information and sometimes answer another question further down the line.
Um, and that, that's, that's a common thing that happens again and again. So um, <laughs> I suspect we've covered this one, but the last one I'm going to ask uh, iPad, <laughs> iPad, hello iPad. <laughs> uh, I, should, I, I should ask you iPad, what's, what's, what's your name? What should I be calling you? Kathleen. Kathleen. Hello, Kathleen. Hi, Welcome hi. to the game. So, Thank you. <laughs> Kathleen, when I asked um, which of these is the correct answer, A, B, C, or D, which, which did you choose? Well, as I say, I never saw the answers. It wasn't, they weren't come up, the questions weren't coming up on the iPad. Oh, sorry. Okay. No. No, it's okay. But the team that I was with, I think they picked C. C. <gasps> Okay, C is unfortunately not the correct answer oh, yeah. in this particular oh, yeah. case. D. Um, <laughs> oh, D. 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 Sorry. D. Yeah. So, <laughs> D is the correct answer. Um, it it does help if you were if you were if you were getting them all right up until this point. Um, <laughs> you, you would have, have had an advantage. So the, the reason why it can only be D does some does somebody know? Yeah, the both A B C D. Well, Right, okay, yes. Yep. So it, it follows a pattern. So basically, so the answer for question one is A. The answer for question two is, is B. The answer for question three is C, if you consider them A, B, C, D as the options. Mm -hmm. Four is D. Five is A again. Six is B. Seven is C. And then eight is D. Now, what, what this is an example of is that in the past when people were writing questions, um, and you, if we didn't have a computer to randomize the answer options, what typically happened, it, it's just human, human nature. It's that when you're choosing which one should be the right answer, <clears throat> if I'm a student, what I usually do is, ah, oh, I haven't had a B for a while. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I just stick in a B. <laughs> mm -hmm. And equally, when, when you're a teacher and you're writing questions and you're, you're manually selecting which one's, which one's going to be in the right place, you, you're kind of, you naturally want to sort of mix them up. Like, oh, like I, you're not going to put every one to be A. Um, but then you go, right, so I haven't had one as a B for a while, so I'll put the right answer as a B. And then just in the back of your head, you make these choices. So ultimately, um, a student, sometimes if they're completely stuck, they just look at their previous answers and they go, hmm, haven't had a C in a while. I, s I swear that somebody else in the room must have done this once in their life. <laughs> 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 and, and you've chosen a C. Now, okay, let me stop sharing and take us back into the room. <gasps> oh, we're all back. So these eight examples are common errors in multiple choice questions. These are things that people occasionally get wrong. And, and th they actually come up in SQA exams um, where these errors have been written into questions and identified. And the SQA does provide some, some literature and guidance as to writing things like multiple choice questions. But even then, there have been cases in the past, this is being recorded, Gosh, okay, um, but <laughs> news reports and articles of, of, of exam questions that have been delivered at higher level, uh, checked and moderated by multiple people, <laughs> where they found that a number of the questions had these errors inserted <laughs> and, and, and they have caused problems <laughs> with the assessment. Now, um, uh, let, I, I realize I'm, that that quiz took a little bit longer than, than I had intended. So, so I will rattle through my, my other quick examples of the kind of things that you could possibly do with an assessment with your own students. Um, and this should apply for any, any kind of thing that you're, you're, you're doing. It doesn't matter the system that you're using um, or, or the platform or, or the, the, the uh, particular VLE, for example. Right. So, um, and I'll give you a copy of my, my content free quiz uh, later. Right. Okay. Let's see. Uh, I, I wrote a course um, a long time ago um, called Making More of an Assessment. I really have to redo it. Um, I will redo it and, and I'll, I'll just share it openly. But in, in this course, um, I covered like various ideas that I enjoyed uh, using with students and I, I had some success with. Um, so in the course, the, the, the examples I thought I would just quickly give you are, okay, so this one. Um, the, has anyone ever used uh, like a forum in a VLE before to, to manage discussion? Mm. No, right, okay. Honestly, forums, such a pain. Um, mm -hmm. Like getting people to actually write in a forum 
is is seriously difficult. Uh, <laughs> they just people just don't want to do it. Um, there are various techniques you can get around that, but one of the things that I've had really good success uh, with forums in the past is making a completely tough assessment for my students. Like like unbelievably hard assessment. Not unbelievably, like possible, but it certainly takes a bit of work. And I, and I want to get my students to work together in order to get 100%. So what I do is, so this is in Moodle, but it will work in pretty much um, any environment that you have. <clears throat> so what I do is I, I write a quiz. Um, in this quiz, for example, uh, I won't take you through it uh, completely. Oh, I have to log in. <gasps> log in. So this is my quiz. Um, I write six questions. Uh, let me see. I'll just, I, I won't take you through it, but I, I usually give this as an example. I ask, uh, which well-known pair live at 62 West Wallaby Street, Wigan? Uh, I'm just going to select the first answer for each one. Um, so I ask six questions. How many Apollo missions landed on the moon? Oh, these are kind of pub quiz questions, but they're not ones that everyone would know. In arithmetic, what is the value of four factorial? Uh, factorial written as an exclamation mark. I never knew that until I wrote the question, of course. Uh, derived from the professional trade, which is the English equivalent of the German surname Fassbinder or Fassbender. Um, so these are, these are not particularly easy questions. Uh, squash, oh, um, English scientist who worked initially an assistant to Sir Humphrey Davy and commemorated on the Bank of England's 20 pound, well, whatever, right. Uh, let me finish the attempt. Uh, I, I've answered best as I can. I'm gonna submit all and I finish. Now, <clears throat> here are the answers that I am returned and my students would get back. They would be told how many they got right, a grade of two out of six, a score of 33%. But in my course, they are not allowed to progress until they score 100%. 100%. I refuse to let them pass until they get 100%. Now, in this, uh, one of the things that you see is that now, I, I've got the tutor view, so they don't see this bit uh, that shows you what the, the mark was awarded. But what they get back is an indication of the, the answer that they selected, but they are not told which is the correct answer. So they can only see their choices and they can see their total score. So they know that four of them are wrong, but they're not sure which four. And two are correct. Again, they don't know which four which two are correct. So they're, they're given unlimited attempts to get all six correctly. Now, depending on the question that you set, like my questions, you could look up in Google and, and find the answers. But if you set problems that aren't going to be found just by a Google search, these actually take working out. And, and, and that's the kind of question that works best in this case. Now, what happens here though, is in this, what I also say to my students is, but let's work together. What I add to the question set is a forum. And in the forum, I say, you can, you can share your answers that you got. If you think that you got one right, put it in and add an explanation. You can, you can talk to anyone in the class and you just work together to come up with the six correct answers. And it's, it's one of those ways to get students okay. to actually communicate to each other, talk to each other and, and, and share. And, and sometimes what I found is that with students, they would actually explain how they got the answer. Sometimes students argued over answers, but the actual, the actual communication was the key because the, <laughs> they, they all ended up with 100%. Uh, the ones that came through the end, read through the forums, read through the explanations, picked up the answers and fired them in until they got 100%. But it was, it was challenging enough that they genuinely thought about the quiz and they communicated while they were doing it, which, you know, in a remote sense is absolutely awesome. Anything that gets people to talk together is just a success for me. Mm -hmm. um, no, I, I know I'm, I'm, I'm so over time and it just, sorry, it, it makes me cry. I just, again, side of my own voice. Um, <clears throat> so this is my next one, um, external tools. So I, I like multiple choice questions. I, I, I think they're good, they're quick, but sometimes you want people to show they're working. You want people to do something a bit more complicated that is a bit of a process, but you can do that with multiple choice questions and you can give feedback through it as well. Now, um, okay, I should just explain that as I'm sharing my screen, um, 
uh, I, I was showing these comical elements uh, that were meant to highlight things in uh, uh, <laughs> assessment. Uh, I do have a picture on my screen that says, when I grow up, I want to be like mummy. Um, uh, I, I think when I roll over this, it gives me an explanation. Um, I should just say uh, that th this is a true uh, incidence and it's all about interpretation was an example I was going to give. Um, and it was a response from a parent when her daughter had submitted a picture for homework. Uh, and it just, just to quickly explain, it says, Dear Miss Jones, I wish to clarify that I am not now, nor have I ever been an exotic dancer. Uh, I work at Home Depot, and I told my daughter how hectic it was last week before the blizzard hit. I told her we were sold out of every single shovel we had. And then I found one more in the back room, and several people were fighting over who would get it. One presumes <laughs> offering lots of money. Um, that just to, to explain the picture. Right. So, but um, <clears throat> you can use a multiple choice quiz to, to get people to use external tools. And so what, what I, I usually do in, in these kind of quizzes is that I, I write a question like this. Uh, the question is quite simple. It says, um, download the Excel spreadsheet and calculate what the profit and loss of the company was. To indicate um, a, a loss, add a negative character. Uh, this is for the answer. Um, do not add a pound sign and only hold numbers. So I've asked a, a question in the VLE. It's a numerical question. But in order for them to work it out, they have to download the Excel spreadsheet. So let me, let me download it into wherever it is. Oh, profit and loss. Oh, it wasn't a very big spreadsheet. They have to open up the spreadsheet and they have to work out the answer using the question that I've inserted in there. And it's just like in this, it's just a simple profit and loss worksheet. And they have to work through the, you know, the formulas and come up with an answer um, mm -hmm. and, and they can work it out. But the thing is, you're, you're giving them an opportunity to actually work through things and potentially use external tools. Now, once they come up with an answer, what they can do is they can go back to the quiz and then put in a number and then they can press uh, finish the attempt and see if they get the answer correct. And also, you can add feedback when you can anticipate the kind of answers that they might put in that are wrong. So it's a way of getting students to use a simple quiz format, but to use external tools as well as part of the quiz, uh, get that experience, um, and then put the answers in, back into the VLE so that are recorded for you and you get to know what the results are, um, but also potentially give them some feedback too. So it's, it's just another simple use of, of the quizzing tool. Now, um, the, I have so over time, so um, let, let me just show you one last thing. Uh, what's my last thing that I would say that I, I have a lot of nonsense that I write, um, <clears throat> which I, oh, okay, okay, right. So I hadn't finished this bit. Taking a moment, taking a moment is really important. How many times um, have you, as, as teachers or lecturers, looked at what your students have submitted and just said, did you actually read the question? <laughs> like, <laughs> you, you must have had one of those moments. Um, and, and what you desperately want is, is students to have like, just, just stopped for a second. Or and just their answers. Yeah, yeah, just looked at their answers one more time and, and, mm -hmm. and just thought about before they hit submit or they, they sent you the answers or posted the essay or whatever it happened to be. They'd just taken a bit of time. So um, what I used to do uh, with my, my students, um, and, and these were, um, it was a cohort of students I had in Japan. And, and they would, I had specifically four people in my class that continuously made mistakes about not reading the question carefully. So what I used to do, and the, the, there are various ways of doing it, but the, the simplest thing for me, for any assignment I put in, like especially for like a written assignment or a piece of project work, I would ask, I would add a cover sheet. Now you could do this equally in, in a VLE. I would add a cover sheet that asked them to grade themselves. And I would always use a rubric, which covered like what are the main learning outcomes of this assignment. And I would just say, give yourself a score. And I would use a simple um, kind of measure, just one to five or A, B, C, D, E, whatever you like. Just, just give yourself a score of what, how good you think you've done. Now, the question would be there. The rubric would be there covering the main points that they should have covered. 
um, and, and how I score essentially just a marking sheet and how I grade their, their, their work. And they would have to write in. And I, I swear it doesn't work for everyone. But sometimes people would just go through the rubric, answer A, B, oh, oh, I didn't do well in that bit. I'm going to bring myself a D. And if they, if they weren't submitting five minutes before the deadline, <clears throat> you know, sometimes somebody would take the time to pause just, just for that time to go back and make a change. Sometimes it would just be a question of like, oh, now that I'm looking through the, the kind of rubric, and you know, I'm, I'm, I'm open about sharing rubrics. I, I, I think the, the marking schemes sh should be available to students um, when they, they see how I'm marking it, how I'm judging them, and the main points that they're meant to cover without giving things away, but just they, they sometimes take a second and they've made changes. My students, not, not all of them by far, like I, I'm, I'm talking maybe 5% maybe of my students where it made a difference, but it made a difference. And, and for those students, it was a benefit. And I think if you can find ways to make your students just pause for a second before they submit, then, then that's going to be to your benefit and to their benefit too. And that helps. Right, I'm drastically over time. I will so edit out all the nonsense fluff that I, I, I talk about. There, there's tons of stuff I could go on about. Um, there's, there's so many approaches. And in fact, um, you know, you will all have better ideas than me about how to run this because you do this day in and day out. And when I taught for my, 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 my 12 years or so uh, and did my stint and did a bit in the site, these things can make a real difference for students. And so <clears throat> that's the end of our session for, um, for I, I would have to say, um, for those people joining us uh, via YouTube and watching the recorded session, you'll be wondering, why did he go on about the fact that he's just like gone over time? Because on this version I'm watching, it's exactly 30 minutes. Uh, but that was just the power of editing. So, but <laughs> if you do have time, please join us uh, online for one of these sessions. Uh, they run Tuesday to Friday, uh, 11 a.m. Uh, we're always welcome. Uh, we're always welcome. You're always welcome. Come join us, have fun. And I will not have a baby face uh, next time I have. So thanks for that. Thanks for joining us. Stay safe. Thank you.